Hey. Hey, lady. Did you hear? I came here to tell you. I finally got my bag license. It's a good thing I don't need a bomb license to buy these. Hey, everybody. It's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Last time, we went all over the north and southwestern seas in order to see all the things that our sparkly new bombs were able to do for us. A fantastic, super valuable item. Great appearance of this thing. Just allowing you to do so many things that you previously could not do before. Including hurt yourself. None of our previous tools did that. These things are really special. This time, Merkay is the next item on our hit list. There's a lot of things around here that can be done with the bombs, and I would like to go through and just kind of see what those things are. Starting off, over by the Temple of the Ocean King, there is... Uh, okay, I thought there was a digging spot there for a moment. It'd be kind of cool to learn about a new digging spot that I haven't before. We no longer have to walk all the way around. That opens up a shortcut permanently. And then there was this thing. We saw this for a while. Inside, we got some rats. Boing, boing. Three fallen adventurers slumber forever within the Temple of the Ocean King. They have fallen, but you can seek their advice on how to survive the temple. Okay, just in case you hadn't tapped on them by this point. It's a little weird that he's there of all places. Uh, up here, gonna make a note of that. Because we ain't seen one of those before. Uh, no, 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 hang on. Uh, give it... Give it some eyelashes. There we go. Make it look all flary. Beyond it is a treasure chest containing a power gem. We have been rolling in the gems lately. Unfor well, I was about to say, unfortunately, we're not that rich, though, but we just did a thousand rupees, so whoopsie daisy. Uh, if I check the collection screen, we got six power gems, so we're still not quite in the territory where I want to go around buying gems to top us off. Because it's just not really worth it. I don't want to spend money unless it serves some sort of purpose to our quest. Uh, next up, right around... No, not over here. Uh, I want to go back a little bit, actually. There it is! Right up here, there is a hidden bomb of wall. There have been treasure chests and stuff up on ledges all around Murkay Isle that we haven't been able to find before, and... We haven't been able to find our way to before, and this is, I guess, kind of your hint to look for something hidden. I don't know. Perhaps maybe somebody tells you about it, but I've personally never found anyone who does. It was just kind of one of those things that I had to clean up at the end of my playthroughs because I wouldn't find it on my own. However, things are awfully peaceful here. to meet you. My name is Friedel. I'm but a humble singer who travels the world over with guitar in hand. I, I don't want to hear you sing. Don't sing, don't sing. In honor of our meeting, how about a song? No, no. Just a little ditty about whimsy. It's called Magic Box. It's a box full of magic. Put in parts or treasure. After time, look inside and see a surprise. Truly peculiar from one hand to another. Magical box indeed. Glorious exchange. Magical box. Find out what's inside. Ta-da. Yes, indeed. Tis the truth about these magical boxes. Put in the ship parts and treasures you don't want. Yo, okay, I, I can't do this. I'm sorry. It's just it's how I've always imagined Beetle sounding if he was a girl and that's kind of what this is. If it's battle tag mode, what could be in the magical box? Find out. Give it a try. Place unwanted ship parts and treasures inside. So, some treasures are worthless to you, and you might have also gotten duplicate ship parts. This is what that is for, and that doesn't mean it's a trash can actually. Now, we don't have any duplicate ship parts, and we've yet to find out if our treasures are worth anything. It's not a good idea to do this right now, but essentially what she's saying is that this game has multiplayer, and your trash might be someone else's treasure. This is a way for you to trade items and get more out of it. I mainly wanted to come up here just to get the wisdom gem right away, and also to make this easily accessible in the future should we ever want to do this. And finally, now that we have come all this way and done all these things, 
and seen a Easter Island head with a very shiny forehead. That was awfully random and not something we've seen before on these visits. The time has come. Back to the Temple of the Ocean King. Remember back to our first visit where all we had to do was we just had to walk through this one little linear area to get to the new area? Nothing too bad. Yeah, all that. This time around, things are quite a bit different. We've heard that puzzles reset as you leave this temple, which means in order to progress, you need to walk to the end of this room and go down the stairs, go to the top of basement one to now open the way with the bombs to instantly hit the switch and skip the puzzle on the floor to pick up the small key, go down to this part of the floor and dig up this hole that we could not do before. Inside of it, you'll find bombs. After unlocking that in basement two, now we can blow up this lightning bolt and hit the two switches in the center entrance to make the key drop down. Step on the button to boomerang the key to you so you can open up the locked door before going down. Blow up this wall with a slight crevice under it for 30 more seconds of the phantom hourglass. On basement floor, blow up these rocks to get another 30 seconds of the phantom hourglass. Go to the chest in the bottom right to get the force gem and walk it very slowly back up to the main area to drop it in the hole. Grab this pot in the top left to get yet another 30 seconds with the Phantom Hourglass so that you can come over here and open this chest without losing a lot of time so that you can lose all that time and walk it very slowly back over to the center of the map. To get this hole to skip getting rid of the fire, unlock the door on the bottom left with the key to get the third and final force gem so you can, yep, waddle it back with your stubby little legs and then the door opens to the new content. This brings me to probably... We've made it to the door. It's the Spirit of Wisdom's turn this time. Oh, leave this to me. This is the door of wisdom. I will use my powers to open it. Are you ready? Then tap the door. All of that just to reach the new part of the temple that we have not seen before. People know about the Temple of the Ocean King. There's some of you who I'm willing to bet have never played Phantom Hourglass, and you know about the Temple of the Ocean King. This is... More than controversial is how we will put it. The fact that every visit you have to retread the same ground and you lose a little bit of time at doing the same things over and over again, solving the same puzzles. Ew, eyeball monsters! Allow me to explain. Those are phantom eyes. They act as extra eyes for phantoms. If one sees you, yeah, what happens if one sees you? The phantoms will find you and then it only gets worse, so be cautious. However, unlike the phantoms, these creatures can be defeated. Find them on the map. Make sure to defeat them before they see you. I get it, so you have to find a way to hit them before they see you. Man, you'd think that she's a parrot and not a spirit at this point, but yeah, what I was saying is that people know about this. It has, It is very notorious, and I've avoided talking about it or really complaining about it before it was really pertinent, just out of not wanting to, you know, just kind of letting you make up your own opinions about it before you'd, I'd actually start talking about it. I personally am not a big fan of this, having to retread the same ground every time. I think that these puzzles are interesting, and they're good for one time, but it does get old really fast, and that's what I'm not a fan of. There's also the fact that it is stealth-based while also being under a time limit, so it's inherently going to be rougher than your average dungeon. That's kind of what I think of it. Oh no, oh my gosh, this is bad. This is really bad. I can't, no, 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 no. Uh, Crud, no! When the phantom I see you, they spawn in other phantoms, and this one saw me, no! Okay, uh, go, 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 yes, yes, okay. Um, when they see you, they become invulnerable to damage as they fly up and out of Link's stubby little arm reach. Hit them with a boomerang before they see you in order to take them out. Whoop, nope, not today. They're coming, they're coming, they're rushing over. Uh, uh I don't see anything, okay, whatever. I guess Jerry's just getting worked up over nothing again. Because, you know, a guardian of a temple like this would totally have a name like Jerry. Uh, as a rule of thumb also, for your sanity, and so that you can kind of just run around the floor and get through things quickly, I recommend taking out every phantom eye on a floor as soon as they are seen. Not only does it make your life easier, 
but they're one of those enemies that if an entire room of them is cleared out, it is compensating for your troubles. There's a switch. Which hitting that turned off the blowy octos. I was kind of wondering what that did for a second because it didn't really make much of a sound. And inside said chest is another power gem. We're up to seven. Boy, at this rate, we might actually have to go shopping after this in order to get them so much of what I was saying a few seconds ago. On the opposite side of the room, there is another cracked wall. Inside of it is the third switch, and that gets rid of the spikes that allow us to go over to the key, and I want you so bad, but bashing against the wall is doing nothing but wasting my precious time, so there is no time for stupid, petty humor like I like doing. Curse you, Temple of the Ocean King, for being a paradox and being stealthy speedrunning. Use your items wisely to earn more time. If you come through here again, talk to me. I will teach you something valuable for stopping by. Talk to Bones. I'll be sure to remember that. Oh, no, 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 who goes there? Uh, nobody, it's just Jerry. Um, he's taking on the appearance of a young boy after he was making unnecessary sounds on the job. You don't have to worry about a thing. Hey, it's a good thing they bought it. I still wonder what it looks like to them if it's just Link running inside of a wall, essentially. By doing all that, we now get to open up this door. And we made it down to basement five, and there's yet another floor of dungeon ahead of us. You're seeing why this is a bad thing. The fact that you have to keep coming back here, and you have to retread the same ground, and it just takes so long to do, and it's just such a lengthy place. That's kind of the problem. I think that the dungeon itself is good, it's just retreading the same ground that's the problem for me. Uh, now, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I, I always like getting my tools out whenever I'm inside of an area, inside of a safe zone, just because that's, you know, a lot less bad than doing it the other way. Up here, got some electric choo-choos, enemies that make you wait. Another great mix with timed stuff. Okay, now this just raises the tension. I don't mean to complain about everything. Whoop! Using my newfound tools that you guys taught me to just instantly whip out the boomerang, saving myself some time. This is also why I've been kind of telling you little time-saving tricks along the way and been putting more emphasis on those than I usually would. Stuff like getting used to poking your sword with a bomb. I've been kind of pointing you in that direction because that sort of stuff is a lifesaver down here. Any sort of seconds that can be shaved off of any action, you want to do it. Also, I'm totally passing something up. Oh, hey, you guys. I get 20 rupees. Come on. Come on, come on. 20 rupees. 20 rupees. 20 rupees. Gimme! Jump attack! There's my 20 rupees. I want to go back there to go to that little area off to the side because I thought there was going to be a pathway in this room for some reason, and then I looked at the map and saw, oh, the corner of my eye does not give very accurate information all of the time. We're actually making really great time. We still have 9 minutes and 20 seconds left. Okay, we did all that for 30 more seconds in the Phantom Hourglass, which is less time than it took for us to run over here, so it's not a total waste yet, but it probably will be once we walk back. Now, am I... Okay, this is kind of a life question that I want to bring up. Am I the only one who was bothered when I said we had nine, nine minutes and 20 seconds? Oh, look at that, it was worth it. When I said we had nine minutes and 20 seconds left in the Phantom Hourglass, but we had nine minutes and 21 seconds, if I don't say the exact numerical value for something, it really bothers me a lot more than it would have other, like, for what I think it would for most people. And I don't know why. I really can't tell you why it bothers me so much to do that, but it does. Uh, over there, we have some blowiness going on, and we can't do anything about it, so we're just going to pass that up for right now. Basement 6! We're still not done! Full floor ahead of us! I can see that we're going to need bombs right away off to the left. Well, that Phantom Eye is getting awfully close. So, deal with him. Ah, just a little farther. The clue with the ghost ship should be up ahead. Okay, oof. I'm so glad that we're doing this. I also don't know why I said hoof instead of oof. Maybe I just wish that I had my traditional Zelda horse to get me through this place faster? I don't know. Again, I don't mean to like harp on it too much. It's really not that bad this visit or anything, but I did just kind of want to let you know that this is going to be a thing. Uh, it's, it's so bad that that's like the only thing that I've been able to talk about for so much of this time because it's just that big of a problem. Uh, dig that up, and finally a hole that actually means something. There's an innuendo in there somewhere. Throw the bomb up. Uh, please blow back up. Good. 
Wait for it to start blowing again. Anytime you want, thank you. And we hit our first switch. There was the spikes there. And what do you say, O oh stone tablet? The sacred crest both begins and ends with me. Discover the crest, and the way through the door shall be revealed. That's a one. Oh, no, 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 oh, uh, please let, okay, good. If I didn't turn that off, I was about to be very, very loud there, and I know how much you would, oh, wait, what did you say again? I was too t panicked to read. Before you lies the second tablet governing the crest. And then, uh, oh, probably shouldn't have made that noise. That's fine. What are you? There are four stone tablets that govern the crest. How sad for you for not being one of them and just merely mentioning their existence. Switch numero dos. The fourth tablet governing the crest. And then, good thing he didn't weigh down that switch. I mean, he is a phantom after all. I guess they're not really known for being heavy. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, I see the, I see the phantom eye coming, go, I see the phantom eye coming. And I was just going up, okay, that's fine. I wanna kill him no less, but it's still kinda nice that he's not really causing us trouble. Uh, uh, one second too late. Okay, he didn't spawn in another one, thank God. Is That's the main thing that I get worked up over is that I don't want to do that. Wait, did it? Just disappear? I didn't kill it, it's just gone. Uh, oh, pfft. spoke too si no! Missed. Damn, I suck. <laughs> it was what, four different attempts to launch that at him? By killing all of the phantom eyes in the area, that does not quite open up the way to it, but now it does. That is 30 more seconds in the Phantom Hourglass. Eight and a half minutes, pretty good. What does this one say? For you lies the curse tablet. It will, it brings ruin upon all who gaze upon it. <laughs> okay, that was really funny. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it brings ruin to all who gaze upon it. You're like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And then just, I don't know why though, but I no, 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 no. For destroying the ruin of everything that gazes upon the thing or whatever it said, you don't get anything. So this kind of destroys my rule of thumb as soon as it was created. But trust me, you want to destroy all the phantom eyes on every floor 99% of the time. In a single stroke, draw the sacred crest to reveal a new path. Uh, oh. <laughs> right, it begins and ends with number one. <laughs> I realized it a half second too late, and I thought, oh, Z for Zelda, no. Hourglass for Phantom Hourglass. I know it's on the other side of this door. I could never forget this room, ever. First off, 30 more seconds for the Phantom Hourglass. We've also seen this icon before. Press the sacred crest against the sea chart to transfer it. The temple of courage will open to the holder of the sun key. There's the matching chart. But you can try pressing a bunch of buttons. Nothing really seems to do anything. You tap all over the screen, and that doesn't do anything either. So how do you press them against each other? Isn't that the coolest thing ever? <laughs> I love this puzzle so much. Oh man, on my first time. My story with this was that I got stuck on this for about 20 minutes. Couldn't figure out what to do. I was pressing all sorts of buttons and doing stuff on the touchscreen, going out and back in, seeing if maybe I missed something outside on the floor of the temple. And it just all clicked in one second. And 
it was such a clever way of using the DS's features to make just such an interesting idea for a puzzle. I'm not lying, this little tiny one-time puzzle in a nobody Zelda game that no one ever talks about is probably my favorite puzzle in the entire series because it just clicked on me in such a clever on such a clever level. And it furthers that this game just throws so many interesting concepts and ideas at you constantly for how the DS's unique features that set it apart from other systems at the time could do things. Now I know that this puzzle is very controversial because many of you in the comments have been telling me that this caused you to rage quit the game or that you were stuck on this for hours and you thought it was stupid when you figured it out. And I suppose if that's your experience, I can't tell you that you're wrong because there's puzzles that I know people really love that I got stuck on for over an hour and I said that I was not a fan of in the past. But for me personally, like no, no lying, no exaggeration, no hyperbole. This is probably my favorite puzzle in any Zelda game ever and like... <laughs> I, I could not believe how clever it was the first time that I did it. If you're playing on a Wii U or a 2DS, however, this does not exactly translate well, and I couldn't blame you at all for thinking that it was a stupid puzzle if you played it on those platforms. You have to put the game into sleep mode and then wake it back up, which you're not really pressing it together anymore because on the 2DS there's no hinge. You have to hit a switch to put the system into sleep mode, and it's not as good. Um, that's how that works for you. But personally, I thought it was just the coolest thing ever the first time that I did it. My final time was 8 minutes 44 seconds. See if you can do a little bit better. That could maybe be a little bit of a thing to make it more fun for you, seeing if you can beat my times. Not that I was super good or anything, but I did get through without getting hit, and I did pretty well. All right. With, uh, you know, a little bit of a backtracky visit to the Temple of the Ocean King, not too bad. And then a really cool puzzle at the end of it. We're going to end things off there. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, we go see what Linebeck makes of a C chart that we copied down ourselves. See you guys then.